the Philippines is pushing for the passage of the new Philippine immigration law. And let me provide you the updates or the changes or the proposed changes that will happen or will be implemented once this new law is passed. For those foreign nationals who wanted to have a permanent residence in the Philippines, then this video is for you. This is only the proposed changes. For immigrants, there are now quota and non-quota immigrant visas. For quota immigrants, not to exceed 200 of any one nationality for any one calendar year based on immigration reciprocity and allotment by the Commissioner of Immigration of the corresponding quota number. The proposed changes are implementation of preference visas for first preference. You must show service and qualifications such as educational, technical or specialized experience or exceptional ability in sciences, arts, professions or business. Second preference, parents of a naturalized Philippine citizen. Third preference, spouses or minor children of foreign nationals who are lawful permanent residents of the Philippines. And fourth preference, parents of foreign nationals who are lawful permanent residents of the Philippines. Now, the commissioner, with respect to the first preference, shall allot not more than 50% of the annual quota allotment up to the end of June of each year. And if it's not utilized, it will be carried over to the second, third, and fourth preference. Any unused quota for the calendar year shall not be carried over and utilized for the ensuing calendar year. Let's move on to the non-quota immigrants, which means that there will be no regard to numerical limitation and immigration reciprocity. First, a non-quota immigrant visa can be granted to the spouse of a Philippine citizen. However, the immigrant visa could be cancelled if the foreign spouse failed to give support to the Filipino spouse and family and there is legal separation or termination of the marriage and it is attributable to the foreign spouse second a person of filipino descent regardless of generation for example if you have a grandparent or a filipino parent you could also apply for a permanent residence in the philippines Next, a child born to a foreigner mother during her temporary visit abroad, the mother being a lawful resident of the Philippines, if accompanied by or coming to join the mother who applies for admission within five years from the birth of the child. Also, a child born subsequent to the issuance of an immigrant visa to the accompanying parent, the visa not having expired or revoked. Also, a foreign national who had been previously lawfully admitted into the Philippines for permanent residence who is returning from a temporary visit abroad to an unrelinquished residence in the Philippines. In addition, a natural-born citizen who becomes a naturalized citizen of a foreign country and is returning to the Philippines for permanent residence including the spouse and minor children accompanying or joining such person. Also, the spouse, parent, child, legitimate siblings of a foreign national who is gainfully employed and holder of a permanent resident status for a period of seven years. Who are considered native-born foreign national. So, children or child born in the Philippines to parents who are foreign nationals and lawful residents of the Philippines shall be deemed a native-born permanent resident. However, you are not considered Filipino citizen. Also, native-born foreign nationals. For example, for non-immigrants, a child born to parents who are both non-immigrants shall be deemed a native-born non-immigrant or temporary resident and may remain in the Philippines only during the period of authorized stay of the parents unless the child reaches the age of 18 while continuously residing in the Philippines, in which case the child may apply for naturalization or for an appropriate visa. 
Let's talk about the adjustment of status. If you are a foreign national on a non-immigrant visa, for example, temporary visa, you can be a permanent resident if you make an application for such adjustment and also you are eligible to receive a quota or non-quota immigrant visa and is admissible to the Philippines as a permanent resident and a quota immigrant visa is immediately available to the foreign national at the time of application without the need of first departing from the Philippines. There are instances when you may not be able to adjust your status. For example, if you have violated or you are in violation of immigration laws, rules, and regulations, unless the violation is without the fault of the foreign national or for purely technical reasons, and also if you are a transient. Loss of status a registered foreign national except a temporary visitor who fails to return to the Philippines within one year shall lose this status. However, you may apply for extension after paying the prescribed fees. Here are the required documents for immigrants. Immigrants must present for admission into the Philippines valid passports or travel documents. Also, it must show your nationality and identity and valid immigrant visas, indicating date of issue and period. There are instances where immigrant visas shall not be required of the following. A child born subsequent to the issuance of a valid immigrant visa to the accompanying parent or a child born during the temporary visit abroad of the mother and also who is a permanent resident of the Philippines and also a foreign national who is returning to an unrelinquished lawful permanent residence in the Philippines after a temporary residence abroad and presents for admis admission a re-entry permit. If you wanted to be a permanent resident of the Philippines, you must pass physical and mental examination prior to issuance of immigrant visa. So the consular officer will require you to submit to a physical and mental examination in accordance with the rules of the Commissioner of Immigration. Also, immigrants, if you are planning to leave the Philippines, you must apply for re-entry permit with the intention of returning in the Philippines. In addition, you must also secure an immigration clearance if you leave the Philippines. Also, you must have no pending obligation with the government or any of its agencies. In addition, you have no pending criminal, civil, or administrative proceeding which requires continued presence in the country. And there is no ongoing legislative inquiry where the immigrant is called upon to testify as a witness. If you have any other questions or comments, please post them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for supporting my channel and if you haven't liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I always welcome new subscribers. Thank you guys for supporting my channel. I hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day.